Hello everyone and welcome. My name is Marcus and today in this video I will share with you how to design and animate this kinetic typography using Adobe After Effects. So let's go. So let's start first thing. Let's set up our composition. I'm going to name it kinetic type 26. I will make it 1080 by 1080. 30 frames per second, 10 seconds duration and press OK. Great. Let's begin by crafting the text texture for our composition. Firstly, create a new solid layer with dimensions of 1080 x 108 pixels and position it at the top of the composition for a clean aligned look. Next, grab the type tool and type out your chosen phrase or title. For this example, I'm going to use Stranger Than Paradise. Adjust the scale of the text to ensure it fits neatly within the bounds of the solid rectangle. Change the text color to white for contrast and make sure it's centered both within the solid and the overall composition for visual balance. Now, with the text and solid layer selected, use the shortcut Ctrl plus D or Command plus D on a Mac to duplicate these layers. Reposition the duplicates so they sit just below the original layers without overlapping. Finally, invert the colors by setting the new solids color to white and the duplicated text color to black. This will create an alternating text texture throughout the composition. Fantastic! We're making progress. Now, let's select all the layers in our timeline. Right-click on any of them and choose Precompose from the context menu. When prompted, give your precomposition a descriptive name. I'll name mine text underscore texture. After creating the precomposition, enter it. Here, we will use the region of interest tool. With this tool, draw a crop around the solids and text to define the area we want to keep. Once that's done, head to the composition menu at the top and select crop comp to region of interest. This action will trim our composition to just the specified area. Now, head back to the main composition. Pre-comp still selected, align it to the top of the composition. Next, let's apply an effect to it. Navigate to the effects panel, find stylize and select the CC reptile effect. In the effect settings, expand downwards to fill the entire composition with our text texture. Return to the composition menu, select save frame, then file. Choose the directory where you want to save this texture. Now, let's fire up Cinema 4 d Light. Go to the file menu, click on new, and then select Maxon Cinema 4 d file. This will prompt you to save your new project file before the application opens it up for you. Once Cinema 4 d is up and running, we'll adjust the render settings to match what we used in After Effects. Set the output resolution to 1080. 1080 pixels to maintain consistency across your project. And make sure it is 30 frames per second and on the frame range let's make it all frames. After adjusting these settings you can close the render settings window. It's time to add some 3D objects to our scene. Before we start let's make sure our timeline has 180 frames. Then head to the object menu and choose a torus as our donut shaped friend. In the torus attributes let's crank up the ring segments to 64 and the pipe segments to 32. This will give us a nice smooth surface where our texture can sit. Next, click on the Material Manager, then navigate to the Material tab. Hit the plus sign to whip up a new material. Double click the new material and let's make some adjustments. Turn off the color and reflectance channels, as we won't need those for this. Instead, flick on the luminance channel. That's where our text texture is going to shine. Click on the texture section in the luminance channel settings and select Load Image. Here, you'll fetch the image we exported from After Effects. And just like that, we're ready to apply our texture and see how it looks on our 3D torus. Let's keep the momentum going. First, close the Material Editor once you've loaded your texture into the Luminance channel. Grab the material you created and drag it onto the torus in the viewport. Initially, it might not look right, but we will tweak it. Click to select the material on your torus, then head over to the Material Attributes panel. We're going to adjust the texture tiling, change the tiles U value to 3. This will increase the repetition of the texture across the surface, making the visual more dynamic. To see how it looks, hit Ctrl plus R or Command plus R on Mac to render a quick preview. Now, let's get that texture moving. Move your timeline needle to frame 1 to start the animation at the beginning. In the material attributes, find Offset Phi and click to create a keyframe at its current value, usually 0. Scroll the timeline needle to frame 180. Change the offset V value to minus 100 to move the texture vertically across the torus. Set another keyframe at this new value. If you hit play now, you'll notice the texture scrolls along the torus, 
but the movement may not be smooth, it likely has a bit of ease in and ease out. To adjust this, click on the keyframes you've just created in the timeline. Right click on them and change the interpolation to linear. This setting will ensure that the texture moves constantly throughout the animation, without any acceleration or deceleration at the ends. Give it another preview render. You should see the texture animating smoothly and continuously around the torus, just as intended. We've got a nicely moving texture on a beautifully set up 3D model. Select the torus in your scene. Then, click and drag the torus upward by holding down the Ctrl or Command on Mac. This action will duplicate the torus, complete with the animated texture that we've applied. Once you have the copy, your next task is to arrange the two toruses artfully. Position one so that it stands vertically. When placed with the other, it should form an intriguing figure 8 or an infinity symbol, which can symbolize continuity or endless motion, adding a deeper meaning to our composition. Nice. Now, before we switch back to After Effects, let's set up a camera to enhance the view of our 3D composition. Head over to the toolbar and click on the camera icon to create a new camera. Once the camera is in place, navigate to the Object tab and enable it by clicking on the tracking icon, which activates the camera view. Next, adjust the camera attributes. Change the projection to isometric to give a unique depthless perspective that can lend a graphical quality to the scene. With the camera set to isometric, turning on the grid is useful. This can be done in the composition settings. The grid is a guide to help us accurately position and balance our objects within the scene. Now, using the move, scale and orbit camera tools, find the perfect center for our torus object in the scene. To manage our objects more efficiently, select Torus Objects and press Alt plus G or Command plus G on Mac to group them into a null object. Grouping them makes it easier to rotate and position them simultaneously. Go ahead and rotate the group so that it's oriented correctly towards the camera. Great! With your 3D objects perfectly aligned and your camera set, save the project by pressing Ctrl plus S or Command plus S on Mac and then you're all set to head back to After Effects. In After Effects, our Cinema 4D file is ready to go. Drag and drop it into our main composition. Initially, After Effects will show a low-res preview from the C4D file. However, we can easily enhance the quality. Head over to the Effects panel of the layer and you'll find the Cineware effect. Under Render Settings within Cineware, change the renderer from Software Draft to Final Current which significantly boosts the render quality. I suggest pre-composing this layer for flexibility. To do this, right-click the layer, select Pre-Compose and name it something relevant. Ensure you transfer all attributes to the new composition. Take a quick look at the preview to confirm that everything looks sharp. Next, create a solid background. Go with black to make our design pop and give it a nice preview. Now, if you want to get creative with colors, with the C4D pre-comp layer selected, head to Effects, choose Color Correction, and then Tint. This effect allows you to modify the colors directly in After Effects, saving you the need to go back to C4D for color adjustments. And that wraps up our Kinetic Type project. I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, remember to like and subscribe. Check out my other Kinetic Type tutorials for more cool tips and tricks. If you'd like to support the channel, consider sponsoring me on my Buy Me A Coffee page. Membership grants access to these tutorials, working files, and other valuable scripts and design resources. And that's it. Thank you so much for watching, have a great day, a great life, and I will see you in the next one. Cheers. Bye-bye. <laughs>